requested car tour. Yeah, I'm gonna be um, telling you if you're interested in the buying process, I'll sort of give you a rundown. Hello? Hello. Anyway, so I filmed this intro like 18 different times because multiple things have started going wrong, but I was looking at my, you know, my good old YouTube analytics and I realized that the car tour that I put out in 2016 when I got my Buick for my 16th birthday is one of the most viewed videos on my channel. So if you're here from that, I'm 20 years old now, I had my birthday last week, crazy, and I am now not sitting in a car that my parents leased for me, but sitting in a car that I bought with cold, hard cash. So, like I said, it's a 2008 Subaru Outback 2.5 XT car. It's the highest trim of the 2008 Outbacks, because I'm kind of a luxury vehicle driver myself, and I'm basically just going to get into the entire nitty nitty gritty of the car um, and going through the buying process if that's something that you're interested in. If you aren't interested in the buying process of it all, which all happened last year in like this whole sort of banking organization and finding a dealer and finding a car in the first place, go to this timestamp. You can go right here for the actual tour itself. But for my financial geeks and gals out here, I will tell you what it was like to actually buy the car. Okay, so picture this. It's May 2019. My sister now has the Buick. It's her senior year. It's about to be her senior year in high school. And I had just finished my freshman year of college and the Buick was no longer mine um, because once I went off to school, it became her car. I had been saving up money for a really long time um, for something. I didn't even know what it was, whether it was rent or getting a car at some point, but I was just saving up as much money as I could in case I needed or wanted to make some like big adult purchase. And I really needed a car. So I got home um, and it became clear very quickly. Like in college, I can get away with not having a car, but when you live in LA, you really can't not drive. Like, especially if you've had a car, not having one suddenly, it became really, really, really tricky. So I thought, I was like, I kind of need a new car. Not a new car, I need a used car, but I need my own. Um, so in school, like January, February, basically beginning of 2019, I started doing all this research and I didn't have any idea what kind of car I wanted. I was looking at Volkswagens, old Jeeps, like stuff like that. Um, and my mom's boyfriend was also really involved in terms of helping me figure out if I was getting a good deal, what cars depreciated in value more slowly than others. And we basically came to the conclusion that if I was gonna buy an old car and have it run well, a Subaru is completely the way to go. And what's funny is that like two weeks after I bought the car, I saw an ad for the first time ever that said something like 98% of Subarus are still on the road after 10 years. Which made me feel so nice because at that point the car was like 11 years old. So yeah, so I bought my car at a used car dealership near my house for $4,700 before tax. Um, it was in really great condition. It had like a couple little scratches and dents and things like that, but for the most part it was great. It was in the color that I liked the best. Um, it was a style that I really liked and wherever else I looked, the car looked like it was about six to 7,000. And so I was really, really skeptical at first and I was like, I'm probably not gonna get this one. There has to be something wrong with it. And it had 168,000 miles on it. So. It's a lot of miles, but if any car can run well with a lot of miles, it's a Subaru. Love, it's what makes a Subaru, a Subaru. I'm not sponsored by Subaru, but I'm in the process of trying to become their next spokes girl. Look out for that. We get to the dealership and I remember I was working in my internship last summer and I went to a Bank of America during my lunch break and I came out with like 5,000 in cash in my wallet and I was like, I was so convinced that that was the day I was gonna get mugged and like all that money was gonna get stolen from me. I bought it. That's my car! Oh, it's got a dent in the front door. I didn't know. It's notice. okay. I, I saw it before. It's fine. <laughs> so here were some big purchases that I needed to do after I bought the car. Because when you buy an old car with a lot of miles on it, learn this the hard way, it's not going to be the price that it's listed as. Because you have to factor in, okay, what major repairs does it likely or not likely have? Minor repairs. You have registration fees. You need to start paying for insurance. All of those things. So the first major purchase that I needed to make after getting the car was replacing the timing belt, which I knew I probably had to do. Um, and that's basically a mechanism, if you don't know, 
So there's timing belts, and then at a certain point, car manufacturers started moving over to timing chains, and chains will make noise when they're about to fail. And if a timing belt or chain fails, your engine is destroyed. Like the car is basically scrap at that point if you let that go. So for this car though, it's a belt, which is silent if it's having issues. And so we figured we'd probably need to get the timing belt changed because I looked at a bunch of like, reports and stuff on the car before I bought it um, and maintenance records and there was nothing in there to suggest that it had ever been changed and I think it's supposed to be changed every 80,000 miles or so so it was definitely due so I took it to a mechanic I love those guys it's Dan and Jack's auto repair in North Hollywood and they did a great job I can't remember how much it cost it was probably like I think it was like 700 bucks to get it replaced, which was ouchy, ouchy. Um, but it was great, because I really needed to do it and I might as well have thrown away the original 4700 in the trash. And I paid, I can't remember how much, there's like license plate fees you have to pay and registration stuff and all that probably ended up another couple hundred dollars. So all in all, I was in the like low 5,000s in terms of how much I'd paid. I'm not really sure where I got those numbers from. All in all, I remember it was like low 7,000s by the end of everything, so pretty much my entire life savings. Anyway, moving on. So all in all, after that, it ended up still being a really good deal. Like, I knew I'd have to get a timing belt changed, but other than that, it really didn't have any big issues, so for the price that I got it, I'm very happy with it. So now that you guys sort of know what the original investment was, I will get into the actual car tour itself. All right, here she is, Susie Subi, the best car ever. Um, here she is in all her glory. I recently got everything restored, including the headlights, so she's looking good. The fog lights are not looking so good, but you know, project for another day, yikes. Okay, and the windshield also heats up where the wipers are for snow, which is not very useful to me, but whatever. So now I get some glamour shots of the rest of the car. Roof rack, you know, it's awesome. Wouldn't be a Subaru without a roof rack, in my opinion. So here are what the seats look like. They're black leather, which is awesome, except if it's like 105 degrees out and then you can't really sit in them because it's too hot. But anyway, now I'm just showing you the range of motion of my seat. Everything is um, automatic. Uh, it's not automatic, but you use like little buttons and stuff. Um, and same with the passenger side seat because we are luxury drivers today. And it also has a little lumbar bar for support, which is great. Anyway, so now here's what the back row looks like. There's a decent amount of room. There isn't a ton though, but I don't really have anybody that sits in the back, so no big deal. Um, there's a little cup holder in there, and then there's a net behind one of the seats, but not the other. I don't know. The seats also come all the way down, um, so that's the trunk. And you know, Susie's a station wagon, so we got lots of trunk room. And here's my favorite part of the car, which is the panoramic sunroof. It's so cool. Um, I don't really know why I'm opening it for you guys. It doesn't really mean that you see something different, but I just figured it'd be fun to look at. And uh, here we are closing it again. So, oh, well, my cat just came up behind me. Hi, kitty. Anyway, um, so I just wanted to close it all the way because that's more satisfying. Here are the dome lights. Sorry, he's rubbing my face, which I accidentally left on and my battery died a couple days ago, so that sucked. Um, and here's a little fabric cover that I made for the dashboard because it was super sticky and old and the previous owners didn't get it replaced even though there was a 10 year free warranty, whatever. This is Alexa for the car, used to play music and everything, pretty cool. All of this is self-explanatory, but this is a center console area. Um, we got air conditioning, music, you know, the gear shifter, all that, and there's a little cubby here. There used to be a navigation screen, but that was broken, so I replaced it. And now we come to the steering wheel. This is what I see every time I drive, obviously. Um, the steering wheel controls control the CD player, so, you know, I'll press the mode button and it switches from like FM, AM, you know, XM, CD, and AUX. Um, and then obviously volume controls and the steering wheel work as well. But that's sort of what the overall interface of the music player looks like. Bunch of big dials and knobs, which I actually love. Um, and it has a six CD changer, so I could put six CDs in there at a time, which is pretty cool. I was listening to Asia by Steely Dan but I have five more CDs in there and a couple more on the doors. And then coming back to the steering wheel, we just have cruise control controls, self-explanatory. We got window locks, door locks. Window locks are not a thing, whatever. 
but um, I keep all my CDs in the doors of the car, which is funny because they rattle around so much when the bass is going, but that's what I've been listening to. And then right next to my foot is the little latch that I have to pull to open the gas door in the back, so yeah. We got some pretty utilitarian stuff over here. This is super self-explanatory, whatever. Um, and then on the other door, I have a little tire pressure gauge that I got for maybe $2 at a gas station in the middle of nowhere, but it's done me well, so. Um, and then we have an e-brake, self-explanatory. It's a handle, not a pedal. And then here's the gear shifter. You can go into like a fake manual mode, but the cool thing is that it has three driving modes because of the turbo engine. So I'll explain all of those. First, we have sport, which is it's like resting state. It's kind of a medium. And then we have intelligent, which uses less gas and the acceleration slower. And then we have sport plus, which is the opposite. It accelerates faster, but it's worse for gas efficiency. And then we have my center console. It's kind of a mess right now, but we got chapstick, perfume, screwdrivers, fiber energy, the aux port, you know, you know how it is. Um, and then there's a little arm extender on that, so I can rest my arm on it, which is very cool. Um, and until a few days ago, the lid would fall off like that, right? But since I filmed this, I actually fixed it myself, which I was so excited about. And here's a little montage of me driving. Um, there's no backup camera, which is fine, but I guess I make a really concerned face whenever I'm backing out because I'm always afraid that I'm going to hit something, so... <laughs> That's really cool. Um, but okay, thank God this voiceover can be over now. Okay, here I am back on camera, bye. Closing remarks, I guess. I really love this car, all its quirks and all, you know. It just, it totally works for me and everything that I need to do. And it does take premium gas, which sucks in this economy. This car really works for everything that I need. It got me across the country, which I think is pretty impressive for an 11 year old car. And like, is it perfect? No, it is not. But considering, you know, I dumped pretty much my life savings on it. I love her. If you have any questions about anything, let me know. I've done a shit ton of research on this car um, before and since I've had it. Hit me up either here or on my Instagram. My username is right here. Hello, don't hit me, thank you. So now I guess I'm on my way to Starbucks, but thank you guys so much for watching this video. Subscribe, turn on the notification bell so you can see when I post next. We'll see if it ends up being on a Thursday. Love you all, thank you for watching, and have a good day.